Yo, 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 Around the Coinverse, episode 65. We've got your boys, Crypto Rain, the real Randy Chavez, and our awesome lady, Queen Vivi. Woo! How are we going, everyone? What's going on, everyone? What's Hi, Jordan, Rain, Randy. How's Hi, Dashi going? Yeah. Oh, Dashi's doing quite well. Dashi's uh, hanging out and <laughs> protecting the house when I'm, when I'm gone, so... I, like I swear we need to get a uh, VV dashy drop. That would be insane. Yeah, people follows. want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people who would like that. I think uh, Randy, I reckon you've got enough followers that that like a thousand, a thousand edition drop of dashy would sell out. Would sell out so fast. I, well, I think it's because it's dashy. Um, I don't thousands. Of, I guess it depends on the price point too. I, maybe yeah, like like twenty dollars. Yeah, people would be like, all right, you know, they'll. I, I mean, dashy is just so cool looking. Um, yeah, I, I'd picture something like that, or maybe have like a variant uh, of of like eight hundred and then two hundred, and then have the the variant have like I, I don't know uh, some like an all gold dashy or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but what on the oh, oh sorry, she gone. I was gonna say you could, you could actually do uh, a few things, Randy. We could have like um, we could have your original fridge. So we'll do like the fridge as like the common and then like do dashy as a secret rare. And I don't know, we'll get a couple, a couple more things. I, uh, I mean, we would have to have a big, I would say we'd have to have like a, a in more of a bull market. Cause I feel like nowadays people that have followed me over the last like year or so, they don't really know of the fridge. You have to go way back for that. That's true. That's for the OGs. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so how, what do we think is happening with uh, Omi in the short term? Rain, have you got any thoughts? Um, so this is just trading sideways, right? So a lot of the focus has gone into the AI narrative, Solana, Solana meme coins, but meme coins in general. So when Bitcoin takes off, often the bigger meme coins will run with it. And then some of the new startups will go crazy, right? So it, it's just because new people, meme coins, they're easy for them to understand because there is nothing to understand. It's just, quote unquote, fun. It's like gambling. I, I suggest that the odds are worse than gambling, but people come in and they don't understand crypto that like investing in layer one, layer two blockchains, they, they don't understand what that means. So they just throw money at meme coins. And that's where some of the money goes first is to get more educated in crypto. It then flows to other places. So those narratives are hitting right now. And when those narratives are hitting, other narratives aren't. And what happens is then there's a rotation into other narratives. So like one of the ways I make money in crypto is I invest in narratives that are not running. Like I'm not buying Solana right now. I'm not buying meme coins right now. I'm not buying AI right now. In fact, I'm looking to take profits on AI and Solana stuff, not buy it. And roll it into narratives that haven't run. Mm -hmm. And um, so most people are buying those things now. It's a good time to be selling, not buying those. And looking at narratives that haven't run yet. And the digital collectibles narrative hasn't run yet. I don't know when it will run. I don't have 10 million followers to make it run by me doing a video on it. That's fine. Um, it'll run at some point. Because the value, I suggest that digital collectibles are superior to physical collectibles mm -hmm. in many, many ways. Um First of all, you don't have to fill up rooms just to store your stuff, which is a big downside to physical collectibles. Second downside is trying to sell them is a shit show. You got to send them off to get graded, pay a whole bunch of money. Hopefully they send it back and there's no hiccups there. And then you got to mail them. And if you're mailing them to Columbia, they might not show up. They might get intercepted in the mail, confiscated, whatever. And so digital collectibles, you can put them on the marketplace. Somebody in Colombia or anywhere else in the world can buy them instantaneously and they transfer. Therefore, physical collectibles are inferior in most ways to digital collectibles. Yeah, People there's a, to that. To kind of build on his premise there, uh, just because you see other things running, I know it's hard when your friend has, uh, you know, a, a crypto and a project that's maybe not as good. But it's running and you're kind of staying flat and then everyone's kind of making fun of you like oh see you were wrong it's like well maybe you're not wrong maybe you just aren't right yet like maybe you're just a little bit too early which is is fine as long as you have the ability to go and, and stay where you are and, and bca if that's you know what you want to do but as far as 
what makes a company viable and what makes a crypto that will last in the long term is going to be what problems does it solve. And this is not just in crypto. This is just in in uh, companies in general, like Tesla solved, OK, the internal combustion engine issue where they had uh, a, a lot of issues, a lot of moving parts. And then they just came out with electric car. It has like eight parts. It has like tires, brakes, and it has, you know, one giant iPad in the, in the middle. Uh, and that's about it. You take digital collectibles and suddenly people don't have to go and, uh, and and buy all the physical stuff anymore. And even if you're good at it, like, let's say I was still in the Pokemon card game. If you go on and after England kind of had the Brexit, uh, it became so that not you, you can still sell to there, but you can't go and have it for the same price. Like the people in England, if they were to buy, uh, they have like a buyer's premium or if they have like a thousand dollar item, you actually have to pay like twelve hundred dollars for it. You have to pay a thousand for it and then like an extra two hundred upon upon it being shipped uh, in order to take less or else they just send it back. So you kind of take a lot of people in a first world country that don't want to buy really from Amer America anymore because they have that that fee. Uh, for digital collectibles, you don't have that at all. You have these really, really big fandoms and they don't have to wait eight days or 12 or two weeks for shipping. It just happens instantly. And that's kind of one of the things why I'm really bullish on the on Marvel kind of saying, Here, here's the keys to our collection. Marvel Unlimited, I think, was only available in the West. And now you have VV Comics that has all the new Marvel stuff. Everyone can get it same day. And, it, and it's throughout the entire world. It's not just the West that likes Marvel Comics. It's the entire world. So I'm really, really excited about that. Have you been buying it already? Yeah, I bought a ton over the last. I, I, I feel like VV is going to have to come out. Like when you go and agree and make accounts, that's like if you have a gambling problem, here's like the number to call. Cause I, I feel it already. Like I don't, I don't want, I, I want to, I know I should not be buying all these comics that, that are like D tier comics, but that like, they're so scarce and like, they're probably going to be worth a, a decent amount at some point anyway, just cause of how scarce they are. And then I know I should be buying more Omi cause that's likely going to, to do a lot better as far as ROI, but I just can't help myself. And as soon as anyone brings it up, I feel like Lindsay Lohan in Mean Girls, the original, where it's like, when I'm not talking about Regina George, I hope somebody else talks about Regina George. So I, when I'm not buying, I hope somebody else brings up buying. So that gives me an excuse to go and degen and buy. Well, patient hodler is like maxing his credit card. He's, just, <laughs> he's like, don't talk about my credit card limit now. He's just, I've watched him on stream, just constantly buying the, the new, all the new comics. So obviously it is definitely addictive. I know a lot of people that are buying them. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a pretty big deal, so I guess we should talk about that, just in, if anyone hasn't caught that. But we uh, you know, we have a separate app now called VV Comics, where it's sort of like, it's sort of like, um, it's like a, I guess it's sort of like a place, it's like a store for comic collectors. That's probably the best way to describe it. It's a digital store for comic collectors. And it's sort of a walled garden separate from VV, where you can move uh, your, the what, what do they call them again? The... Because there's two types of comics you can get. There's like the three nine nine and then the six nine nine. Oh yeah, one. one's like uh, the I limited think... edition. Yeah, the limited edition ones. Yeah, they limited edition is the NFTs. I, I don't know if if everyone is going to be able to buy the three ninety nine, and I'm really curious to see what that breakdown is. Because because it's not Marvel comics. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's it's BB comics. So wow, it's a lot of comics. And you um, bought three hundred. <laughs> I'm curious to see what BB gets out of the. 399 and what they get out of like the 698 and and i'm curious also why they have one price at 399 and why one at 698 well like why isn't it 699 like why do they take off that extra penny I, I know costco does stuff like that and that's their way to determine what is like a manager special what won't be in stock the next month so i'm really curious to see what they uh i, I, I need like david on, on the stream again yeah definitely get david on that'd be awesome i want to hear from david we're going to tell him to avoid talking about Omi at all, I think. <laughs> mm, that's funny. What's up, Queen Baby? I'm, I'm still waiting for my comics, Randy. I was about to say, did you buy comics? Oh, damn. Because you, you love, you love Are, Am I the only one? No. Do you get any of them? on Facebook as well. Yeah, How many we do you got, order? We got a bunch of them. I don't know, like 40? Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and we only got like, maybe 
15. Okay. All right, 25 left. But the charges are there. As a matter of fact, I had to call my both my credit card companies. They're like, are these fraud? I have to tell them no. <laughs> yeah, I had to call mine this morning too. Yeah. For lots um, of reasons. Yeah. That's funny. So, so I don't when, know. When you guys... I, keep, <clears throat> I keep checking, so I don't know. Is so it... When you guys are paying for them, uh, you're paying them f f with a credit card. That's not through the Apple store, right? Or not through Google store. So there's no thirty percent bonus that uh no thirty percent fee that's been taken. Do you guys know? I'm sorry, repeat that. Well, now you're paying with credit card directly inside the comic uh, VV Comics app. Does that mean it's not there's no thirty percent fee going to Apple and Google? Correct. Because they're companion apps, right? They're not. Um, yeah. So so this is super exciting. It's on the website, not on the app. So this is. Now they're making a lot, and I think out of the what, what was there, three hundred thousand comics that were just kind of dropped. Um, you have a really, I, let's say they sold a third of them. Uh, I mean, I mean that's that's a lot. That's several hundred thousand dollars that that they that they're just able to get. They got they got money for exchanges now. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> On it, Coinbase, all those big ones. <laughs> um well speaking of which foster has a he posted a tweet not too long ago uh and, and it wasn't about exchanges it was about uh ivers someone said no iverson said would be nice to get more info on bronze tickets what is the value of staking omi on bv uh and then Foster said like the article is coming out this week so hopefully by friday you know we, we have that is that do you say article Yes. Okay, so that'll explain more. Yeah, um, but but I don't uh, I, I don't know. I feel like the time the amount of time it took, I think about three weeks for people to recognize Omi moving from the business development wallet to BitGet, and the time we actually got BitGet, I think it was around three weeks. And I, and unless people see that again, I, I'm I'm assuming we're not. I do remember um, Foster said that was that was planned well ahead of the BitForex. Catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and he basically implied that there's more exchanges that are already pre planned and um, probably already set in stone to come out in the next few weeks or months. So, uh, did he give a timeline? Because I don't uh, think he said we. No, no, I, I, I feel like I would have been creaming my pants no, if he said we. Didn't give a, he didn't give a timeline, but he, he implied that, uh, you know, um, BitGet was, was set up for a while. And there's, and there's others that are set up as well. So, you know, obviously there, there must be more exchanges coming. We just don't know when, where, yeah. and yeah. Eventually it'll happen. Here's some thoughts on exchanges. Really the big exchange that really makes a big difference anymore is Coinbase. Binance would help. KuCoin would help. But the U.S. can't access either Binance unless Binance.us also lists it. And so it's unfortunate that right now Uniswap is the only place that the U S people can access OMI for the most part. That sucks. And and hopefully that gets resolved later on. Like OMI's not really, really going to pump until the digital collectibles narrative hits. And some people want it to go up in the meantime. And it's like, why do you want it to go up now? Like, it is hard when you're watching, you know, your friends that invest in some random sketchy AI project go up 50 X and feeling frustrated that yours hasn't pumped. And a lot of that just comes through being new in this. You, you want to have some wins on the books. Omi's going to win. I just don't know when that is going to win. So while it's still at prices like this, I'm just accumulating more, especially since I lost freaking 32 million from, <laughs> bit for X. Um, that's frustrating, but, um, yeah, keeping funds on exchanges, always an amazing idea. Anyway, um, just accumulating more while prices are good like this. So it's like, if you have some money in some of these other things and you're way, way up, I don't know, might be a good time to consider diversifying out of what's way, way up for what's still really cheap. Agreed. Yeah. Great point. Great point. We've got some really funny comments here. Doge Nation said he'd sell a testicle to get Omi listed on Robinhood. 
<laughs> I mean, that, Robin, Robin that would, would be, be a good. big deal, right? I didn't even mention Robin Hood, but if it got listed on Robin Hood, that would be as big as Coinbase, maybe bigger. <laughs> I, I mean, just to kind of lower expectations here, you have a currently there's a lawsuit between the SEC and and Coinbase. I don't think we would get on a Coinbase listing while that lawsuit is active. Right. Um, that, yeah, and I feel like a lot of American exchanges have had that same battle with the SEC. Um, so, so maybe at some point we get those. But Hopefully there will be some kind of conclusion to that in the next three months. The law, There's already enough law on the books that it seems like the SEC is going to fare poorly in that lawsuit because what they did essentially sued Coinbase saying Cardano is a security and these other ones are all securities and suing them for listing security tokens. And this is just the SEC trying to take governance over crypto by essentially backdooring it all into being a security. So this is just an end run to backdoor tons of these projects into being securities so that then they can regulate it. And, and there's some weird exchange that the SEC has apparently been working with that they're trying to give this weird exchange funded by China or Chinese investors access to being the first securities compliant crypto exchange. And, um, you know, Gary Gensler also met with Sam Bankman fried like 17 times. So it's fair to say I don't really trust who Gary Gensler likes to green light. Yeah. I would prefer the existing players to, first of all, I don't agree that they're securities. Secondly, I trust Coinbase far more than anything Gary Gensler says is, oh, yeah, they're the right people to run anything. Sorry, Gary. You've lost all that trust. Agreed. Uh, we've got Chris Ashby saying, Rainmakers Unite. What's up, Omi Homies? What is happening? We got a. I don't know why we've got a ton of people watching now, guys. Two hundred fifty-five. Yeah, it just jumped up. I don't know. Someone put out a tweet or something. Uh, I think Patient Hodler's video just ended, so I think people are kind of even raiding us from even that. Raiding. Yeah, might be a raid. <laughs> yeah, Patient Hodler's so so excited about the comics. Like it's it's very contagious. Um, yeah, he's smart. A lot of these comics are underpriced still. They're they're great buys, and it's like, oh, you know, there's ten thousand mints. Seems like ten thousand mints is a lot. Um, I don't think even all the, you know, there's probably more millionaire Arabs from oil money than ten thousand, and so oh, they could each 1, all have one. <laughs> Whoops. Yo, yeah, it's just one thousand mints. It's nine hundred eighty. Um, I think some of them had like 40 edition covers and stuff, right? Like really low. Yeah, the, the secret rare, some of them are one of 40 for a while. Osman, shout out to Osman Collects. But Queen really Vivi, when you, I know you only got like 15 of them, but when you got some, how, how'd you do? Did you get any ultra rares, secret rares? Uh, also, you're muted, rare. by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I didn't. Um, Will got a secret rare of uh, the blade, I think, cover. So, yeah, it was it was crazy though. It was like old days. I, I mentioned this the other day um, on Spaces. You know, William was like tapping on the phone and on the computer and waiting, and it wasn't you know, and he couldn't get it. And then all of a sudden, Spider Boy would come in and he put it in his cart, and then it was this great rush to pay. So it was kind of reminiscent of, you know, of the old days. It was like all those years of preparation, you know, <laughs> come back to play when you're like, you know, he's like, wait a minute, are we on wireless? Wait, should we disconnect? Should we hardwire? Like it was, yeah, it was like that kind of mentality at our house from like three when they said they were going to be back up until probably like six. It was just this, you know, this total, um, yeah. Old school clicking craziness, craziness. Yeah, Osman Click says Vivi just dropped the comic book bomb on us. Still recovering. Uh, look, uh, do you guys know if they're almost all sold out yet? Or some of them did. We we don't know how many. They're not, and even the ones that did sell out, not all of them are delivered. Yeah, yeah, so like they're not updating the app. Yeah, and right now yeah. it doesn't look like they're updating the app. You know how normally it'll tell you like remaining additions yeah yeah so so it 
you know, the interface right now isn't isn't at optimal performance yeah, right now. Yeah. They're probably we scrambling to fix it. We would need like the four of us to take like an hour and just to go through every comic because it's not just like hey, here's one comic. Now you have a series of them in in that run. Like let's say like Gwen Stacy, uh, Gwen she has comics one, two, and three of like the Spider Smash or Gwen Smash, whatever they're called. Uh, and the first one sold out, but the second and third ones are not yet. So those are, I, I mean, we would need to do that for each one, which, which is fine. We could do it. Someone's just got to do the legwork and make the chart. So if anyone down below wants to do it and comment and be like, I know these ones are, are sold out, by all means, you can you can help us do that way. Yeah, that's oh, wild. Yeah. The old Secret Rare is 600, and now these, yeah. The, the only issue I see is that these are, uh, kind of D tier comics, but but again, that doesn't really matter. I went over this the other day on my one of my streams. There's a a Pokemon out of the not the original 150, like the original 250. So it's in, in the second generation uh, called Yanma, and there's maybe one person that I know that likes it out of all the Pokemon masters I know. Nobody has it on his team in the show. It doesn't really get a lot of attention in the manga. There, there's, I don't think there's any mention of Yanma in the manga, and they go over like every Pokemon. But the first edition PSA 10 Hollow, the floor is like twelve thousand dollars right now, and the last one sold for not five figures, but it was close, like eight. And it's like, okay, well that's going for more than the legendary birds, like Moltres, Articuno, like they have movies based off of these Pokemon. Why is this Yanma bug Pokemon going for more? Because there's only fourteen that are in PSA 10 first edition, and the other ones are a lot easier graded. And they have hundreds of them. So it's really the scarcity that I think people are kind of overlooking, and they people should probably hang on to some of these, uh, even though they're they're B tier comics. I, I think just because of the scarcity, they'll go up. Ray, we have a question for you. Can Omi really reach those since this bull run in twenty twenty five? Um, yeah, it may happen before twenty twenty five, but the way it comes together, and looks different than most people think on how crypto runs happen. So a lot of it's emotion and FOMO and other things. So if you think about it, like why is Doge running right now? Why, why are all these meme coins running? Well, for the first time in three years, we have new money from new people coming into crypto. So somebody with new money, they, they think, oh, Bitcoin's so expensive. I want to buy something else. So what do they gravitate towards? Meme coins. Why meme coins? Well, because there's not much to understand. There's actually almost nothing to understand. There's not some deep technological thing that somebody brand new to crypto can't wrap their mind around. And they have heard stories that people made money on it. Omi is positioned in a way. One of the reasons why Omi ran more than almost every project out there in 2021 is because Omi's easy to understand. So as people were coming into the crypto space, like Omi actually kind of behaves like a meme coin, even though there's function behind it and utility behind it. People often when they're buying Omi don't understand the function or utility. It's just associated with this app that they find cool as hell. And so I want some of that is their answer. Like I don't understand the utility and everything. Because brand new people, the crypto, they're not going to understand the utility and everything for a while. So it's really nice for those of us in crypto that understand those things, that that's really important to us. But brand new people, when new people come in throwing new money, um, when the digital collectible space goes crazy, OMI is going to go absolutely berserk. And it's going to hit market caps that it shouldn't. I think that market cap, and I gave it a 70% chance that it hits a $100 billion market cap. That would put OMI at $0.30. Cents. So I still think there's a 70% chance it hits that market cap. And a lot of people argue with me and they say, that's ridiculous. I don't disagree with them. It is ridiculous, but that does not mean it won't happen because look, my background is the study of there's two things I'm really good at, which is economics and people behavior. Perfect background for crypto because some of it is understanding the economics behind things, but more importantly, people behavior. And People behavior is really, really funny and FOMO is real. And this is why markets over boom and then over bust and over boom and then over bust. Because realize if it hits a hundred billion dollar market cap, it should not be there. 
And what's going to happen is going to correct and it's going to correct and swing too far to the downside after that. And so it's a great strategy for making money is buy things that are undervalued. When then they become overvalued, you sell them and then you buy them again when they get undervalued and these cycles repeat every four years. So awesome. It's a, uh, yeah, it's really exciting, really exciting time. Um, still hodling my Omi bag and uh, I'm fairly diversified now, as you guys know, um, but I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what, what can happen. We get Omi to NFT. It's going to be exciting. Um, I know uh, V Viral, he's been super vocal about how much he wants uh, Omi to NFT. And I know we know that's what they're working on right now. That's the next, the next step. Yeah, Q2, we think, we think we're, we're not 100% sure, but we're likely. I think, I think they've mentioned Q2. I think that's something that Foster said. That'd be a good We goal. don't know where Q2 is three months, you know, this three month period. Yeah, they, yeah, it could be April, it could be June, it could be close to summer or, or even at summer, technically still in winter. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, one guy in the comments is sort of raging here, Crypt Tony. Um, <laughs> He's, he's just uh, going on and on. If he wants to know why I'm not putting most of his comments on the screen, most of them are really, really long. He's asking a lot of different things. Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll put this one on because he really wants us to, to understand it. said, uh, everyone's been scrambling every week to snag these comments and all of a sudden they drop 300,000 300, um, 1K mint comics to various. Make it make sense. Okay, so Randy, when he says Randy, they made us scram. Sorry, go ahead, Jordan. Oh, no, you, do you want to handle this question? I mean, when he said they made us scramble, they didn't make us do anything. They said, hey, they come out a couple of days prior saying, here's what we're going to drop. And they had videos uh, from old rhubarb saying, here's why we like this comic. Here's why we're releasing it, whether it's in conjunction with the She-Hulk or Moon Knight or, you know, like whatever it is. Here's the characters. Here's like the history on them. And then people like Comics and Crypto or just anyone can go out and say, here's what it sells for in a 9.8. Here's what it sells for this. Common Crypto literally has like a pass or, or fail for it. So they don't make us do anything. There's a lot of community involvement saying where, whether it's going to be good or bad uh, and whether you maybe should take a look at it or maybe it's something that you should guess. But they don't make us do anything. Uh, what was the rest of that comment? It was, all right, then all of a sudden they dropped 300,000 thousand comments. I mean, and again, they're, when you launch a, a party, whether, whether it's something like at a restaurant, whether you have a, a, a grand reopening, you want to make sure you have enough food for the patrons. You want to make sure that you don't run out of product or else it, you know, um, it ends early and you want it to have as long and make as much money as possible. So when they open up something like this, they, I, I mean, they, they want to go and kind of do it with the bang. And again, they're not making us do anything. I feel like, and maybe I'm, I'm harping too much on the, just like the wording of it, but I feel like that, that, that does matter. Um, so yeah, we're, we're adults. We do what we want or don't want to do. Yeah, so my, my understanding is they got an opportunity to basically take over, more or less take over Marvel Unlimited, their online yeah. subscription service, and turn it into VV printing their comics, right? It's a pretty major deal. So uh, that's that seems like why they've separated into a separate app. Um, but it's pretty cool how you can get them and take them across to VV. And so, uh, Randy, have you have you moved some of them over? Like you've uh, you've moved them from. Uh, you have to push a button, don't you, on the comics, and it moves them from VV Comics to the VV app? No, it's automatic. It's automatic? Okay. Yeah, um, which is great. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need to use the VV app at all, right? You can just use the VV Comics if you're just a comic collector. And you don't yeah, want to and then you can yet. use the, the VV Comics app to read it, and, and it's a lot better. The The reading on – if you do it on the VV app, it's you have to, like, kind of scroll in, but when you – push your fingers like like apart so that it scrolls in and you pinch it it what it does is a lot of times it hits the next panel or it hit, goes to hit the next page and it thinks you want to go to the next page you have to go back but on this one you can click on each panel and then scroll in that way so it's just a lot easier to read uh which really makes a, a lot of sense um so, so it's a lot easier now okay yeah that's, that's i i haven't um, i haven't uh, used it yet but I'll, I'll probably get there eventually Cool. I think that more or less explained it. Um, Crypto Tony, he's not a VV hater. He's an OG. Serious questions. Look, uh, Tony, I think it's mainly because they got the opportunity to to take over such a large part of Marvel's um, comic 
books and it's it, it might be short term yes it's going to crash prices and stuff but long term it's a really really good thing like it's extremely good for vv and the amount of money they've just probably made is going to really you know help them through you know the next 10 years or so like that you know david Yu is not looking in one year he's looking in multiple years time frames this is like a long-term project it's not a pump and dump it's not a quick get rich scheme it's a long long-term project and, and i hope people know that as vv makes more money especially money that they don't have to give 30 percent to apple or google that's just more money in the war chest to go and get more licensors to more and, and grow the team like you, you don't want to just continuously have the same amount you want to consistently grow and you have growing pains and the, the best way to put a band-aid on those growing pains is, is, and is really just to get more money and then you have obviously exchanges as well so this is really only a good thing um unfortunately i feel like there's a lot of people that just kind of think too short term they don't think long term like that and then also i want to bring up I don't know how David and Dan got Marvel to agree to this, but this has happened for years now where you see Disney on other places and you see Star Wars on other places, but you don't see Marvel on other places. We have that exclusive deal with Marvel and us, whether it's the collectibles, the comics, but it's not a Marvel comics app. It's, it's a VV comics app. So we're not exclusive with them in the same way they are with us, where we can go in and we could bring in Dark Horse, we could bring an image. And I really think we can get DC on as well. And I feel like people aren't, I, I mean, if, I was, if I'm CEO of DC and, and I see Marvel making a couple hundred thousand dollars in like two days just on this, I'm like, okay, that 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 would be a big line item number. And it's not costing them much at all. I was about, so. about to say, Randy, they, um, they did actually mention other brands are coming, other comics are coming. And they said, we'll know what they are. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe we have DC, maybe, fingers crossed. I, um, but I, I think they so. showed graphic novels, right? They had manga graphic novels and other categories in, inside the app. So we know that we're going to be getting a lot of really exciting stuff. I do have a quick question for people who have installed it. Um, Laurie and Randy, uh, do you need to do KYC in the comics app? I'm guessing you don't. Oh, I guess, I guess not. Um, also, Laurie, you're still muted. <laughs> <laughs> My husband keeps yelling, so I keep unmuting. No, uh, we didn't have to. We didn't have to read KYC. When you get in there, you you put in your PV account information, and it kind of like um, you know, it links it together, Jordan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's really interesting. So you could, but could you use VV Comics without a VV account at all, or do you have to make a new account? Sorry, what was that again? Can you can you basically just use VV Comics? Um, yeah, you don't. VV yeah. Oh, well, I I don't know. I haven't tried it, or I haven't. Yeah, I don't I think I know anyone that's tried it. You should. I, I think the best idea would be right if you could use VV Comics as a VV uh, comic collector, and so as a comic collector in general, you could use it and buy them without having a KYC. And then if you want to trade them in secondary market in the VV app, then you need a KYC. It makes more sense to get people in like that. Because they might buy a hundred comics before they decide they want to start selling, buying and selling them, and then they have to KYC. And that way, they're committed before they have to be doing KYC, which can you know put some people off. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, yeah, probably right. Depending on their area, because I, I know I think places in in some parts of the world they're they're still not allowed. They're restricted for some reason. Do you guys but reckon the they'll part, do audio books, audio book comics with narrators? That'd be really cool. I'd love that too. That, that would cost a lot though, I feel like. Because you have to do them for each comic and you're going to have uh, to hear. There's really good AI voices now though. I mean, if they... I reckon it would be possible. Yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah. Some more comments here. Vivi somehow connected to Fortnite. I mean, we'll pump like crazy. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen the same well, way. In Vverse, there could be some connection with Fortnite, potentially. Yeah, just Epic Games. I, I mean, if Epic Games has that partnership with Cavernous and, and Cavernous is building the Vverse, then it's likely that they're going to be interoperable at some point. You know, with the, I, I mean, you know, Disney's going on on Fortnite with the yeah, Epic, and but, so I, I, it's not that they're going to be like sharing stuff. Well, I guess they can if, if they're all if they're both interoperable with each other. Yeah, I don't see why not. But I also don't see that happening for several, several months, if not a year or more away. 
Interesting. Just yeah. going through some of the comments here. Um, yeah, Tony, Crypto Tony is still uh, he's still a bit upset. <laughs> uh, started with a five to ten year plan. I'm successful in music, so I'm not pressed. But it seems like VB is going backwards sometimes, especially with rewarding OGs and hodlers. Um, yeah, it's they could definitely do better to reward the the long term holders and hodlers, but you know it it is a premium digital collectible app like nothing else there's, there's no competitors you gotta try and find a competitor anything yeah, we had no. almost competing went down right there's no, there's no competitors and did you guys see the uh metaverse light post about the vverse no no no, no. It's, Can you um, it? so it's I, I i when i first saw it i saw it post on facebook i was like oh god did something leak because it was so like beautiful and, but it's uh, it did not. It was Metaverse Life just posting a beautiful, beautiful photo of some of these guys, and it's uh, they, they look absolutely incredible. And and obviously this is just off my phone right now, so it's wow. not going to do it really justice. But it's the, the detail on that, and it's in what engine was that in? That was in. Unreal Engine. So, I, I mean, you're going to have a version that's going to be in Unity, and then, but that's an Unreal, and it looks incredible. Yeah, Un Unreal is insane. It's lifelike. There's, uh, yeah. I just, I just saw a couple of uh, games that came out recently. Oh, I can't remember the names of them. They, they are running Unreal uh, five point two or whichever version it is now. It looks. They, these are shooting games, so it's nothing related to to VV or Omi or anything. But these are shooting games. But you're walking like down a corridor in a hospital, and it looks like you're watching a video. Someone's someone's recorded like a body cam shot of a policeman walking through a real hospital somewhere. It's so realistic looking, absolutely insane how how good quality that um, that engine is. And yeah, it, it, as long as we've got high quality. Um, like uh, collectibles, like the, it looks, it can look lifelike. So it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see like an Apple Vision Pro inside the Vverse. That would just be insane. Yeah. Um, I kind of want a, I, I don't know how to answer this yet, but the comic guy, well, I guess maybe we should go to his, his tweet beforehand. Uh, did anyone see that? The comic no, guy well, tweet. Um, is this all today? I think we've, we've all missed out today. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, he had tweeted, he was, well, let me try to find it over on X before I bring up his comments. And, no and um, Tony says, don't get me wrong, he loves VV. He has zero O, but he's still rocking the O in his name. she tell you something. <laughs> All righty. Well, maybe she gets more more Omi then. <laughs> um, All right, I can't. Okay, here it is. The comic guy had posted, F Marvel Comics, don't spit in my face and call it sunshine. This move with VV official is a direct slap in the face to every local comic shop. And then it was just absolutely taken over by people saying, hey, I've never really been into comics. I've never collected comics. Or I used to collect comics and haven't in years like myself. I haven't collected it really in over a decade. But I, I started buying again because of VV. And 99% of the comic comments that were on his post were like that. Um, but one of the things that he had mentioned, we, he had mentioned down there in the comics saying, why do you think Marvel didn't tell local comic stores about same day as print? And I'm, I, I have a potential reason, but it's, it doesn't sound good. Um, so I want, <laughs> I want you guys to go and answer in a way that it might make it, my answer seem not as bad. Um, if, guys, if you if you guys have any ideas or, or thoughts or theories on why Marvel didn't go and tell local comic book shops that they were doing this, ah, uh, yeah, okay, I saw the comment about that. I didn't really understand it. Um, no, I, I, no, no, maybe they just, yeah. How how would they contact them all? Would they have a way that Marvel normally contact all the comic? Because they're not going to go. I mean, I'm sure them. they have that already with email, because because they're the ones that buy the comics from yeah. them. You know, so they would I'm have their emails. Them. They could have notified them, right? And maybe because they know they're going to be annoyed. <laughs> they didn't tell them. Yeah. <clears throat> what I didn't what know benefit does sending that email out do for them? It really, it doesn't benefit them very much. 
they'll probably get more. I reckon they'll get more backlash if they tell them rather than not tell them because a lot of them won't notice for a while. And so the, the negativity will be slower and linear. A lot of these comic places aren't really tracking the digital stuff very well or they're kind of poo pooing it. Yeah. Why? Is that, is what's funny is they, in, in their mind, it might think, oh, if it ever takes off, it'll make me obsolete. I have not actually seen that be the case. If they massively embraced and had like VV comic parties, they would probably sell more physical comics too, because like Randy was saying, that like I like I hadn't ever bought a physical comic ever. And I went to the the event um with Palm Studios and I bought like 25 of their comics that they made specific to that event. And I'd never bought some before. And so I'm only collecting physical comics. Why? Because I got interested because of the digital comics. Yeah, so see, we're I we're think the wake up physical comics more than anybody realizes. Yeah, we're the same way. Um Rain. We didn't, we never had comics in this house um, until we started buying comics because we saw them on Vivi or because they gained popularity through Vivi. Although I do still see the point of, you know, some comic, some comics. I, how many newspapers uh, do we have anymore? I mean, how many people, when was the last time anybody here read a paper newspaper too? So, you, you know, I don't think that's completely. Um, <laughs> out of the scope um you know that eventually maybe comics will become less and less in hard copy um as, as time goes on but but right now i i think you're right rain it's serving the opposite effect um but i don't know at what point you know that boils over and eventually you know they're they might go away in time yeah i, I mean so you guys have maybe thought that thought of something else one is that they are if, if, if this was held super tight, I, I, I don't think anybody knew about this unless you were at the highest level of EV or Marvel. So, you know, to tell like how many local comic book store owners are there? there thousands? Like, like I, there's got to be a lot. So they probably couldn't risk the amount oh, yeah. of those people knowing and then it leaking. That There's just no way. Have all of them sign NDAs. That'd probably be too much. And and that's probably why. Um, I'll, I'll refrain from I'll, I'll have that be my answer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it just reminds me of, yeah, like the bookshops. Heaps of bookshops have shut down now because you can buy the books online and they you can buy them cheaper generally. They get delivered to you. You don't have to search throughout the bookshop to try and find the sp yep. specific book. Um, there's a lot of people Easy that storage, are... storage, you know, right? Yeah. Easy they do storage. Kindles. You Kindles, you do a lot of digital books now instead as well saves paper like it's it's instant you don't have to wait for delivery if you do the digital ones so you know a lot of things that are physical are going to be digitalized and i think um old school comic book um shops are just gonna have to get used to that and like rain said they can hold parties there's all sorts of different ways they can make money in the comments here we've got some people saying you know they can i think it was um philip here um they can have tablets in the store like you know to, to so they can digitally show off some of them and and you know just get people into the store and you know there's there's a lot of other things a lot of people have said they've never ever collected physicals including myself i don't know if you can see my background but i i now have i now have some digital collectibles uh, so physical collectibles because zorro. of bb yeah zorro which i also have on the wall here which you can't quite see but um i got i got this only because of vb if i wasn't into vb i would not have ever bought something like this so it goes both ways, right? And so, mm -hmm. I think um, I think some people, you know, how much they make from a comic anyway is it like ten bucks. That's that's the profit they'd make is like two dollars, right, from selling a comic. So they might lose a few bucks here and there from from these digital ones, but there's possible, you know, they could gain more people potentially. Yeah, I mean, it makes so much sense for Marvel to do this because you have, I mean, you don't have to pay for ink shipping the insurance on it uh, yeah it's gonna be a lot plus um, every time it changes hands they get a percentage of that resale and they don't get that on physical comics so i'm sure they're as excited as can be about this and then i, I wish comic guy was kind of here for this so there's a over the years there was a lot of friends that i had that had a passion for video games or had a passion for for something uh and, and but they had never ran a business before. And they said, like, hey, you know, Chavez, you 
you give out loans to business owners all the time. First, they just ask for a loan and they have like no plan. So I, I feel like a, a lot of people just are, it's very hard to, to run a business. And when a lot of people go and get to that point, they realize that one, they could do everything the right way. They can go and budget, they can go and, uh, you know, say like, okay, break down all my expenses. Here's what I need to do. And they could have a good location. They could work out a, a, a deal and, and it just doesn't work. Like sometimes it, that just doesn't work. So if I'm Marvel and I see half of the people that go and order my comics at the local comic book shop and they're really, you know, some are over ordering or some are, you know, not ordering enough and they, they don't really have a, a good handle on the numbers and you see some people like, okay, we're averaging this many to this person, but then, five or 15% of their clients go out of business within the first six months to, uh, you know, two years. It's like, okay, we can't really count on these continuously as, as line item numbers because they're um, the people that are doing this, they've never ran a business before and they're, they're doing, they're making some mistakes and, and they're belly up. Um, it's just much easier to do it this way where, where again, it's global local comic shops have like a, what a 10 mile radius, 15 mile radius. Uh, and then you have, and and that's that. I feel like that's generous. I'm thinking really more like Midwest and stuff. Uh, comic shops in big cities don't, don't have that at all. I don't think. Um, oh, where's it going? I've got an interesting comment here from Zara. Wouldn't be surprised if VV Comics adds an option of buying the physical comic with limited numbers. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, when it gets delivered, delivered to your door. That would be cool. That would yeah, that would be a really cool add-on. Like, so, and you know, they can make some more money from it people get the physical that's because some people really like to physically touch you know like the comic books and, and stack them up and you know, there's a bunch of things you can do physical that you can't do with digital um but having both you know that's like win-win because uh, anyone lo loses i guess is these comic book stores uh right. legacy media is dying marvel just put their foot on the throat <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's it's happening everywhere, right? Like, uh, you guys saw the Sora demo. Have, have you guys all seen Sora? If you guys haven't seen Sora, I might have to pull I, it up. I've seen so many of those. I don't know which one's which. There's I'll like bar. Sora, I'll find Sora in a minute and I'll pull it up. And I, I think it's something we should all look at because this is like the future of of film. Whoa, what have I done? Oh no, uh, we're, we're all normal. I, I can all see us. So I don't know what. <laughs> what are you seeing, Jordan? What are your? Oh, uh, I just I accidentally stretched my screen out. All good. All good. Fixed. Oh, okay. I'll find this for you guys and I'll chuck it on. I think there's nobody's gonna laugh at that Lord of the Rings reference. Okay, I see how it is. Oh, okay, here we go. Are you humming the Halo theme? Oh, no, no. Okay. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right, here we go. Um, I think this will share it. Can you guys see that? Uh, yes. I don't think there's any sound anyway. Okay. Have a look at these animations. Uh, all these different things are all 100% generated by AI, but just by a text prompt. Just a text prompt. <laughs> and the quality is insane. There's actually <laughs> studios that were going to do $800 million worth of renovations to expand their studio. They saw how well this AI generated has done, and they've canceled all the $800 million worth of construction and plans. I to expand bet. Their studio. Because they won't need a studio. They'll just need to write a text prompt and yeah. pay for some expensive servers. This is insanely good. Oh, that's so cool. There's origami uh, underwater. Like the, the quality is just insane. And it's, and it's consistent too. It's different to old AI generation. Um, things warped a lot. And this doesn't really do that. Uh, have, have a look how good some of these look. This, this, this looks like a real scene. It does. Oh my god! Completely AI generated. You can okay, see not that. That that freaks me out yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there's some weird things that happen. But this is the this is the worst it's ever going to be. Check That's out the woolly mammoths. <laughs> Shout out to Mamai Token. Uh, that um, looks so cool. It does. To that one. Oh, I want one. <laughs> what a woolly uh, mammoth! I, I want, to, I want yeah. to be able to access this program. Look at this. This is all generated. They're giant. And, you know, this is the worst it's ever going to be. Imagine when it gets just a little bit better. For scenery already, though, the scenery is absolutely amazing. They can use that already for studios, and they can just green screen actors for now, right? And then they can have all the scenes can be 100% done by AI. And, look, and the, this is the first iteration. And then the next iteration will be you can have full AI actors that are consistent and 
you know, it's, it's just, it's insane. All you need is good people that can give it good prompts. Like it's a, it's a new language. Like you would have two it different is. people give it two different prompts and it'll do. The young man is probably sitting on a piece of cloud. <laughs> like, look at that. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, I think you guys probably get the point now. Uh, maybe we'll do, we'll do one more and then I'll, I'll turn it off. I think we might have the, the cyborg one soon. That was really cool. There, I feel like people already have the issue with Hollywood, like, oh, Hollywood's not realistic. Now there's going to be no imperfections on anyone. That They're all just going to be perfect people. That's right, yeah. I mean, like, look at and, that. That's so cool. It's like a drone, drone footage. You can't have perfect people. And that's why Spider-Man's so popular, Randy. Yeah, we'll love him. And they even have text in this. There'll be text in some of the scenes, and it looks it look actually I think that's early on. I think I, I skipped over that. Let me just puppies. Cheer the, cheer the puppies. Oh my this gosh. is so creepy though. We're never ever gonna be able to trust our reality moving forward. hundred percent. It's sort of good because you won't be able to trust it. So you can, sort of I mean, this, is cool. this is like a a man on the moon. And I'm trying to find the, I don't know where the ones that I wanted. Ah, is that it? This is pretty cool. This is Japan. All these people are fake. None of them are real. Mind blowing. Ah, this is the one I wanted. Check that out. You can make a full cyberpunk movie. So cool. Wow. Mm. Right, that'll, that'll probably do it. But you guys get the point. There's never been as good quality mm. AI generation ever. This is people are like, this is 10 years away. Like last year, they said it's 10 years away. So it's There's Sora a, by OpenAI. Anyone who's wondering, you can go look it up. Sora by OpenAI. Is that the one that Elon Musk is in a lawsuit with right now? OpenAI, yes. OpenAI is. Because he started it. Elon Musk started OpenAI. Yeah. He, he gave also gave him a bunch of guys, kind of money. You guys know they just made Grok? The Grok bot uh, completely open source yesterday? Yeah. He's this, a this beast. This is the most insane thing to ever happen is the large language model Grok which is, you know, is Elon Musk's baby, um, like that, that is like ChatGPT. They made it open source so everyone in the world can now access the code and make bots out of that. I love so, him so much. So that's, that's going to like change the game. That's now like all sorts of people have to work out what they're going to do with this because like I can go now and grab that source code and pay for a developer just to modify a little bit to how I like it. And I can have my own chat bot that it does, it does so many different things. Like this, can't wait! Really, can't wait for that in the VP verse. Let's go. Yes, yeah, uh, that'll be really cool if they hook up ChatGPT. Um, I think I already showed demos of that ages ago. Do you guys remember we watched uh, GTA, something like a GTA one, where they'd go through and they made all the bots talk? Um, th that's yeah, it's, gonna be, it's really going to change video games too, right? It'll also change movie production because it will greatly decrease the cost of movie production. You'll have all these independent artists like using AI to create scripts and stuff. So if you thought there was a lot of stuff on Netflix and Amazon, um, there's going to be more in the future. Yeah, it's just it's going to be insane. Like they can eventually you'll be able to AI generate um, your, I guess for your like your V verse, for instance, for your you could tell a bot what to do and it can go and make it i know for now there's going to be real humans doing that that people like um sanjay uh, mr mc1 said he wants to pay someone it was like two or three ethereum something like that to to go and make his home space really cool in the v-verse but eventually you'll be able to tell a bot to do it and, and just through a text prompt and it will go and it will sort out your collectibles and make them look cool and put them in a spiral or whatever you've asked it to do that would take you hundreds of hours and it can do it in you know a matter of seconds or minutes um, have, yeah. have you yeah. ever seen that South Park episode where the, the kids don't know that they're in a, a like an alternate yeah. reality? Yeah, I love that one. That's so funny. And there's an Indian uh, tech support, and then <laughs> and then he's like talking to another Indian tech support in a different multiverse, and he's like trying to like, "Hello, how are you going?" It's the funniest thing ever because he, so he's real. trying to like, <laughs> he's he's trying to like work out. He's like, oh, yeah, it's it's you got to see that one." South Park. Yeah. I don't know what uh, episode it's called. What what yeah. I had to do, I didn't know it was on Paramount. I saw the clip on TikTok and I, I tried to, and, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Again, I didn't know it was on Paramount. 
So I had to Google which episode that was. And then I had to pay like three dollars for it for the episode on YouTube. I was like, I don't care. I need to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Um, I I want to know why Lori doesn't think buying a mammoth is a good idea. Because I think it's a great idea. Me, Lori? Yeah, you said it was like I said like I want I want a mammoth, and you're just like, what are you gonna do with a mammoth? Oh, couldn't you do with a mammoth? So I will shout out to this token now. M A M A I. They're trying to bring funding to get mammoth back to life. Is is that the? Research. So I'm really curious about this because they're they've been trying to do this for years. Utility. It's a meme coin of utility. Okay, but there 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 are actual scientists that have been trying to do this for years with the Indian elephant. Is that what this is, or is it yes, completely? Yeah, they're also trying to help protect uh, the dodo bird and a few other animals. It's, it's okay. Like that a, could be really interesting because, and I'm curious why they have this now. Is it like for funding? Is like they run out of money, and that's why. Yeah, they're so they, this this one, um, I think they had the five or ten. It's five percent. Here we go. Funding de its extinction and cons conservation of endangered species. That's pretty much what you want to do, Randy, right? That's yeah, maybe of, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> when Omi goes up, I'll just hey guys. Maybe you should uh, yeah, maybe you should get in contact with Andrew. Andrew, I think might be the um, yeah. Andrew leader. shoot me a message. Tell him I'll throw millions their way in, in like a year. Because yeah, I think I think it's at a one point two million market cap, guys. It's pretty pretty cheap, right? Oh now. wow. It 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 just started like a month ago or something, and it's gone from nothing to that. Um, yeah. I think five percent of the buys and sales goes to funding. There you go. So there's a five percent tax on it, I think, and that goes to funding. Um, research cool. and all that. So wait, what are they doing? They're like Jurassic Parking it? Yes, it? essentially. Yeah. Hey, it was in a movie, and you know what follows being in a movie that you can mm -hmm. actually Reality. do it. I mean, Star Trek had like cell phones, right? These devices that they talk to each other on, and then it became reality. So. Oh, man, it's crazy. If we were 100, like if we brought our mobile phone 100 years, 100 years back, they would think we're like witches, right, or whatever, and they would, they would um, burn us. <laughs> One hundred, maybe two hundred years ago. Still, not that you, far you, ago. The, you wouldn't have anyone you could call though, because <laughs> this yes. cell phone networks wouldn't. You could be play up. some apps until you run out of power. You wouldn't be able to yeah. charge it either. <laughs> Wait, why would? But, when, when did outlets become invented? Pardon? What? When did outlets become ubiquitous enough that everyone had an outlet in their? I, oh. I think the electricity revolution oh, yeah. in the thirties and forties in the US, yeah. I think it yeah, was when a lot of that was the twenties and the forties. Hmm. Yeah. I, I'd say they probably became standard, Randy, in like the forties or fifties, like standard, but probably you know, they came about in the early nineteen hundreds, you know. Okay. I don't know. We've seen a lot, guys. I mean, and it's it's just going exponentially. I mean, I, I know I can't speak probably for Jordan and Randy, but, you know, I, I believe Rain and Rain, you, you probably had to go to the library and um, know the Dewey Decimal System to find reports to write your reports and your theses and cite all that. I mean, it's just crazy to think what it must be like today. I, I, <sighs> I haven't heard Dewey Decimal System in like 18 years. <laughs> I, I I had to read my archives to even remember what that was. I'm like, oh yeah, everyone said that was a really big deal, and we need to understand how to use it because otherwise we would never be able to research. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't. Um, I, I mean, just thinking about that, and and like all of that's here. Like, like it was just I don't know. Even just from what we saw as far as music goes, I mean, just in my lifetime, I've seen everything from eight tracks to records to cassettes to DVDs to now streaming. I, I mean, everything's just going, you know, exponentially fast. And I think AI is going to be that next, you know, that next big jump. And it's going to shape, you know, just like we're saying, these NFTs could possibly, you know, change the economics of comic book stores. You know, AI is going to change a lot of, of economics, just like, you know, computers changed changed a lot of the way we did manufacturing. So, um, you know, just plan on seeing another revolution with um, AI and worker knowledge. I mean, 
we're, we're already seeing it. And, you know, they're asking us in, in my in my job now, what types of things would you want to use AI for? You know, how can we help you? And um, there's already just different ideas for different systems we could use just to make our lives easier. So it, it's it's rolling. Yeah. I would much rather, maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. I probably shouldn't. But uh, so, you know how Jordan referenced in that South Park episode, there was Indian tech support and, and they, they had a, a, a good one because you could understand with it. Every now and then, sometimes when you're going to like, Hey, your card is declining. And let's say you have Citibank and your card is declining. You, you, you don't talk to an, an American. You talk to someone overseas somewhere. And I feel like it would be a lot easier, whether it's the language barrier or it's the just being able to have AI just on, on support. Like, hey, I'm having this issue and, and they could just have it trained. I, I don't know exactly how they would train that model, but just to oh, go Randy, and have I just I just watched a video on that, Randy. They're doing it. They already have... They already have AI agents that yeah. can do tech support. It's the, they've got they've got one called Devon. You, you guys heard of it? It's a it's a programmer. So it's an AI agent called Devon. It's a programmer. You guys can look it up later. It, you can give it a task, and you can just give it a readme file on how to do something technically. It'll just go through the readme file, and it has access to like a web browser, and you can chat to it, and it'll and and a scripting thing, and it'll just go through, and it'll it'll work it out, and it'll follow the steps and do it. And yeah, there's there's ones that will do uh, phone calls and everything. AI bots, it's it's getting it's getting crazy, man. Like they they have that. What you're talking about is is coming in the next next two or three years. You probably won't be talking to too many people on the phone. It will probably be mostly AI agent bots because it's going to be so much cheaper for people to deploy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you know it, there will be a lot of loss of jobs in the next ten years because of AI. Um, but it's, it's as good as it is bad because it also makes everything incredibly cheap and it all, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a crazy time to be alive with all this AI stuff. So, so my, my comments look like a war zone right now. Um, I didn't, I didn't delete anything. I just went to mute someone and then it, YouTube deleted all their comments. Like, and it says like Randy Chavez deleted your comment. And it's like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't do that. I just wanted to quell the fighting or, 60 seconds and then it just I'm gonna have to deal with that later. All right. I'm I'm never doing that again unless <laughs> unless they're going crazy. Have you guys seen figure zero? I've not. No. Oh maybe I have to pull this up as well. It only goes for two minutes. So th this stuff is it's all related to VV since VV is pretty much like a technology company, going in VV. And uh, I think it'll be it'll be pretty good. Uh it just goes for a minute. It'll just blow your minds a little bit. Okay, let's see how we do this. We will quickly share my screen again. Get ready, guys. Okay, here we go. Everyone can see that? Yes. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I, 
think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. Nice. What do you guys think? Mind-blowing or not? Um, the way it's going is amazing, right? It's a little bit slow, has to process it, but that'll speed up. In the coming years, it'll be fast like that. Terminate type of scenarios. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. That That is how Terminator comes yeah. up. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's sort of two directions, right? It's, it's one, one direction is um, AI goes rogue, um, and the other direction is AI becomes a very, very useful tool to help humanity. So hopefully I mean, we go the the helping humanity one. I'm, I'm very curious on, yes, it gave him three tasks, but when it said, when it when he asked, how did how do you think you did? He not only addressed, he's like very well, but he addressed each of the tasks that he did and not the most recent one. And that, mm, I, I feel like if you were to ask most people to do those three things, give me something to eat, pick up the garbage, and then put the stuff in that how'd you do is like, oh, well, I put this in there. Like they just wouldn't be as eloquent and they would only address the most recent task. So that, that's a little. Fairly impressive. Oh, Fairly yes, impressive. but also a little scary. Yes, I de definitely agree. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're living in like the craziest time possible. Do you think maybe we're in a simulation and we chose to come into this lifespan in this like particular time frame where everything goes from like almost no computers whatsoever to like computers everywhere and AI everywhere? Like it's <laughs> it's weird that we happen to all be alive in this exact time frame. The, the chance of that is greater than zero. So there is a chance that that could be the case. I yeah. would give I it a low probability, but there's definitely a chance. Elon it, it, it Musk says the opposite. He says there's 99.999% chance that we're in a simulation. Just yes. because of how fast computers are increasing, the odds of us being base reality is really low. That's his but, argument. So, so when you talk about um, uh, us being here right now, let, let's say, you know, zoom way out and let's mm -hmm. pretend that the universe is a game and you have to have a trillion different suns and trillions of planets to get one of these things right. And you only have a couple of people to start. Uh, and then, okay, you have a tech tree. You start out off as protozoa and you start off as this. And the game is not really fun. It's not fun until you get like animals. Okay, that's cool. Okay, you know, random something happens where civilization for these dinosaurs end and then something else happens. And it seems that once we have a cool species with a tech tree, it's still not that fun for a little while. You get, you, you die, like most, it's not that long of a play game. You know, wind the clock back a few thousand years ago, you go and you get to play for, I don't know, 30 years, maybe if you're lucky. Some, you know, you if you're a girl, okay, you're probably going to die in childbirth. If you're, you know, starting this new game, you might actually die as soon as you get born. You might not even survive that pregnancy. The mom might. So it's probably not as fun to play. But <laughs> over the last hundred years or so, where, okay, now these people, these things, now they can drive, you can do stuff, you've unlocked so much of this tech tree. And that's when you see the population kind of boom. You, yeah, you might wind up being a, you know, born in a third world country. That's a horrible spawn spot. But you might also be born into this like middle class family in a first world country. That's a great spawn spot. And the odds of people getting better spawn spots are getting up to a point where it's it, it makes a lot more people want to play the game. That's why there's more population because more people, it, it becomes a more popular game. And then you have the people that are playing that want to do good, and there's a lot more people that want to do good as opposed to trolls that just want to cause chaos and kill people and murder. And like, let's say you have the World Health Organization in like 2000 that wanted to like have poverty by like 2018, and it does it by like 2013. So it seems like all these people or all these beings that are playing us if that's what this is, they, they want us to get to like this uh, amazing spot and then maybe we create our own microverse. I know I just went off on a long tangent, completely off the, the heck out. Apologies about that. You can go ahead and delete me now. No, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, I yeah. do want to address some comments in here and get back to crypto. I mean, the AI conversation was awesome and it was good. Thank you for sharing those videos because it does give us an idea of where technology is going, which is really 
crypto is unlocking some of the future, but it's not the only thing unlocking the future. And there are some coordination between AI and crypto. Some um, there was a comment about like, oh, Randy losing people money, and then you know, hey, Randy, what happened to the utility art project you were hyping up so much? Was that a scam from the beginning? I just kind of wanted to address something because I had some comments on some of my YouTube videos that like crypto is early stage VC investing. If you come into this thinking that anything like everything you invest in or that if you listen to someone else who was investing it, that everything is going to be a success, your expectations are way, way, way off the wall. When when I started to figure things out and keep in mind, before I even got into crypto, I had 18 years investing experience prior to crypto and i was new to crypto but i came in 2017 really hadn't figured out that there were cycles or anything i had 15,000 turn into 165,000 and then go to 3,000 by the time i went to 3,000 i started to recognize that there was a four-year pattern in crypto and that we were in a bear market and that i like buying low so i bought like crazy during that bear market and 65% of the projects I bought went completely under. Imagine if I had a YouTube channel back then. 65% of what I would have been talking about would have failed. 35% succeeded. But that 35% that succeeded went 100x from what the bottom was. So overall, my return on investment was 20x from what I had put in or from the very bottom of what it went down to 100x. So if your expectation is that everything Randy talks about is going to succeed or everything Jordan talks about, everything I talk about, you're being stupid. You're just being inexperienced and expecting like there's this chance that everything succeeds. Now, some of the projects will even be exit scams and they fool even the best, right? Um, a lot of them will just flat out fail. This is like a scary space. There are lots of sharks trying to take your money. There are projects that are going to fail, like even normal VC investing. Do you realize that like 90% of what normal VCs who are experienced angel investors invest in, 90% of what they invest in fail. And so to come into crypto thinking that like somehow you're not going to take at least 50% of what you invest in and lose just wrong expectation. So like, but I showed that if you're investing in the right things and you're holding for the right time frames, you can have a 35% success rate and you can make 20 X overall on what your investment was. Or if you happen to time me exactly at the bottom, I could have made a hundred X from there. And so let's just get right with expectations and let's not be stupid about, Oh my gosh, Randy, you talked about some project that then failed like don't be dumb i i just don't have much tolerance for it oh i mean i do want to well for, i'll build on that thank you rain uh the first thing is that i don't know how you can call utility art a, a scam when it never took any money from people like they never had like a a coin launch they never had an ico they never even had any nfts for sale um so they definitely didn't scam anyone by not taking money the other thing i want to build out on that rain said mm -hmm. is that you have people that are CEOs that are, I don't know how to put this, or I'll try to put it this way. When you're a CEO, you can't just wear that one hat. You have to be a salesman. You have to go on and be a motivator. You have to be a psychiatrist, psychologist for your workers. You have to be a salesman because you have to convince other people to go on this crazy road with you that is being a startup. And, and most startups fail. And most startups fail, not because the ideas are bad, but just because a lot of people don't know that you're going to have to work and work 80 to 100 hour weeks. And you're going to have to sacrifice all of the relationships that you have. And I'm not saying that the relationships have to end, just that you're going to be seeing your friends and your family and your loved ones a lot less because you have to work on this or else the company will not survive. And you're going to like David has Dan. They're both super successful prior to Vivi. They're both incredibly intelligent and then they go on and they try to hire more people uh, obviously dan's a co-founder he's the coo but it doesn't matter how smart the people you are that are hired they're going to come to you with things that they themselves cannot solve and you have to solve and all of those things like that that's why you have to work 80 100 hours a week that's why david's like falling asleep at his desk because he's on like three four hours sleep a night and i feel like a lot of people don't understand that uh about about companies and, and some companies do all that 
NFL. Like you could be, I, I, I don't know if it's in, not, not in sales, but if it's in any job or any school, or whatever, you do X and you get Y. You go on and you, if you're in school and you study and you get good grades, cool. If you're in sports, okay, you, you practice. If you're in martial arts, you practice fun, you practice dodging. You know, if you practice that, you will get better at it. You could do everything right in the two things. I think in, in medicine and, and in entrepreneurship, and, and you could still uh, not save the patient and you could still lose your company. So all these things are exceedingly, exceedingly difficult. And uh, the fact that Dave and Dan have kind of made it this far, uh, I mean, we, we saw it, I think in 2021, I think that's why we all initially invested that they're here because they wear a bunch of different hats and they're able to handle it. And I feel like a lot of people that are criticizing have never invested in tech before like this, or they just have never owned a business. And a lot of people that are criticizing just think it's so easy oh well if you do this well you know if you do x you'll get y that's just not the case and again i feel like i've gone on a really long rant there but <laughs> yeah that makes that makes sense all makes sense to me laurie I, we need to hear laurie we need to hear from you more yeah laurie i'm sorry um what do you think about investing in new projects oh i think it's scary <clears throat> um i think you have to I don't know. I feel like sometimes we say the same things over and over again, and it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, th this has high risk, high reward, and it, it is scary, and it does suck to lose money. And, you know, we lost money on the exchanges, too. Rain lost money on the exchanges, too. And, you know, that was a, that was a conscious decision. I mean, that is all of this is just part of being in the wild, wild west. And I think we've all said this. If you want safe, go to your bank. They're given 3.25%, you know, with a $10,000 minimum deposit and or, or use your traditional 401k um, or something like that. It, you know, if if you want to feel, you know, protected and insured, et cetera. Um, so I don't know how many times we could really kind of keep saying this over and over again until it sinks in. But you know, for now, you're not going to have the stabilization. You're not going to have that security. And it is going to be scary. And as soon as it's not scary, then it stops being so damn lucrative. Yeah, exactly there's definitely right. that risk-reward ratio. And the more mm -hmm. risk, generally, the more reward. Reward. So uh, Raul Powell makes the perfect case of why anything but crypto right now at best is treading water because the amount of money being printed in the U.S. alone is like 15%. You're losing 15% of your value. So if you're not making at least 15% in your stocks, you're losing ground. So you're not actually accumulating wealth in your stocks. At best, you're treading water. The only thing that is massively outpacing that is crypto. Now, tech investment is also outpacing that by a little bit. Crypto is the only thing massively outpacing that. And so if you just want to outpace that, you know, Bitcoin does pretty well and it's somewhat safe. But realize nothing is safe. Your bank isn't even safe. Your bank might fail. FDIC insurance may fail at some point. Who knows? Like nothing is safe. Bitcoin, what if Bitcoin was hacked? Bitcoin isn't completely safe. Now, it might be 99.6% safe, but realize even Bitcoin isn't completely safe. None of this is safe. If you're looking for safe, you shouldn't have been born. Everything is dangerous in this world. Things are trying to kill you. Things are trying to take your money. Nothing is safe. You're just managing different risks. So I tend to invest in high risk altcoins. That means I'm not going to have a 0% failure rate. I am going to have a fairly high failure rate. In fact, if I have a 0% failure rate, that means I'm investing too cautiously. So what is my failure rate? I don't know from this bear market to the bull market because we're not there yet. I know I've had at least six things that I've invested in and talked about because I talked about the things I'm investing in that have already failed. So it's not going to be a 0% failure rate. It's going to be higher than that. It might be an 85% success rate. It might be a 70% success rate. I don't quite know. We'll know better as we get into the full bull market. But things have failed, right? And so some people, like I released a video the other day about five projects I thought were massively worth looking at. Someone commented in there, what about this and this and this and that failed that you talked about? And it's like, yeah, clearly you're not getting it. Like, why are you even listening to my channel? If you don't understand that if you want safe, you're in, in the wrong place. We are in high risky stuff. 
yeah, I lost money in those projects. I lost 33,000 in Bitforex alone from the 33 million I had of OMI on there. Well, shoot. You know what had happened? What would have happened though if I had it on a wallet and that wallet co got compromised? Because the wallet's not safe either. What if I had it on a hardware wallet and I lost the hardware wallet to that or the, you know, if I had it in some um, cold storage wallet and I somehow lost access to that? That's also a different form of unsafe. So we're dealing in a very unsafe environment. What you're trying to do is manage risks and take risks that are smart risks. I like altcoins. There is something special going on that can help you go from not rich to extremely rich over an eight-year period. And it looks like this. Normal VC investing. And when I was in college, these guys taught this class and they were all multimillionaires. They were angel investors. They taught for free and they'd come in and teach this class and they talk about angel investing. I was like, that is the best job in the world. They invest in businesses. Somebody else runs the business and then they make good money. And they are the ones that told me that there was a 90 percent failure rate. But the 10 percent that succeeded made them over a 10 year period, about 7x over a 10 year period. OK, look at the numbers in crypto. We have a four year cycle. This four year cycle does something special for crypto. Meaning that your business that you're investing in, your crypto business, doesn't need to ultimately succeed. It needs to just survive until the next bull run. And then likely it's going to pump massively, at which point you then take profits. That's why early stage um, investing in crypto, like I still had a 35% success rate. Do you realize that all these VC investors would die for a 35% success rate? And then to make 20x overall in a four-year period, they have never even heard of that type of stuff because that's not available to, well, to them because they're still investing in old school businesses and haven't realized this little thing that's going on with crypto. That because of this four-year cycle, we have very condensed time frames that you don't need to wait 10 years for your business to succeed. And the next bull run is going to go crazy. So if you're investing in the bottom of the bear market, it's about two years before the bull market. And the kind of gains that you can make are completely unheard of. But yes, you're going to be taking some well-researched, risky business decisions, and some of them are going to fail. But the ones that don't will make you so much money that angel investors would give their left hand to be able to invest with these kinds of rates of returns. Why? It's only going to work for another cycle or, or maybe two and then the rest of the world is going to catch up on it. And a lot of this risk is going to be less risky, but also the returns are going to be greatly diminished. So I've never seen a better opportunity. Nothing is even close to this opportunity we're in. And that's OK. A lot of people are here in crypto and they want to argue about stupid things like, oh, my gosh, this project failed and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, clearly, you don't get it. You, you don't understand the space that you're in and you don't understand the opportunity that you're missing. OK, so I had an advantage. I had 18 years experience prior to this. I went to business school. So I get that, like I had some education and some time that I put in to learn those things. But like many people here, I was born poor. I often joke that I was too poor for Kool-Aid. I had to put myself through school. I had to work to get everything I ever accomplished. And I know that like many of you, well, I was really interested on how not to be poor my whole life, on how to have money because money gives you options. So. I was well prepared when I saw this opportunity to recognize exactly what it was. So when I started my crypto channel, I thought, well, I'm not going to be like all those crypto YouTubers. I'm going to help people recognize this opportunity we have and how I take certain risks and I don't take other risks because it gives me a better chance of success with this four year cycle. And I'm still perfecting that. Right. Clearly, my first four year cycle, I wish my success rate was better than 35 percent, but I tried investing in meme coins because everyone said they were cool. I didn't understand what I was doing with those. I tried investing in some other risky stuff that I realized that those are just too risky to touch. And so I was perfecting the system that I have, but realize even this time that I'm much better, still a non-zero um, failure rate, like the failure rate might even be 30 or 40%. And even if it is, man, the overall gains are tremendous. Yeah. Preach. I um that's one of the reasons I've now diversified and uh I'm I'm again like you Rain I'm trying to perfect my portfolio and I'm trying not to touch it too much now cuz I'm pretty sure I've got it how I like it and I think that's something you can do is if you keep chasing green candles as you've said 
or, or even just even if just you know changing from one to another too too often like it's you're going to miss out on some of those big gains and so you have to have conviction what you've got and you need to probably do a review every every few weeks or months to make sure everything's going well um, and it's it's a really really interesting space to be in and it's going to just absolutely go crazy in the next few months um, i did see someone mention uh, rate cuts as a time to sell i'm not sure about that that's um, absolutely wrong. Some tokens have forexed in three months till rate cuts, then we're all effed. I think it's actually going to do the opposite, and you know, yeah. money is going to be cheaper. There'll be more more liquidity coming in. <clears throat> so I don't really agree with that comment. Yeah, um, that's the same. Which is fine because you know everyone has their own opinion, and like we're all just giving our opinion here. Nothing we say is ever financial advice. This is just our ideas, and you know you got to be accountable for everything, every action you make. Um, do the research yourself. Don't just listen to someone online and just go and copy them. Definitely uh, put in the time. It's worth uh, it's worth researching. And you know, I think we're very very lucky to be where we are in crypto right now. Like it's you can make so many mistakes and still come out well and truly ahead. You have to do pretty like you have to put a lot of effort into to really fail in crypto at this point. Maybe putting all your money into meme coins is not a good idea. Um, my portfolio is less than three or four percent in meme coins. And even that, like they've, I'm already up two or three x in most of those meme coins. So, it's um, you know, it would be it probably only put I probably only put one or two percent of my portfolio into meme coins. But they've, you know, it's growing. When it gets to ten percent, maybe I'll pull some of that out and put into some more utility tokens. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's uh, Solana is going nuts, guys. I think it might flip Ethereum. I think there's a chance that Solana no. flips Ethereum. <laughs> no way. I don't know. It's it's about to hit number two. Uh, so number three. It's going to be right behind Ethereum. It's, uh, so so things run in cycles, right? So Solana, I was just recording a video that will come out later this week on Solana, right? And realize how many people are talking about Solana and they're saying Solana is going to flip Ethereum. It is a fantastic, amazing time to sell Solana and Solana ecosystem projects because nothing runs for forever. So there are a lot of people getting into Solana for the first time. Why? Because all the YouTube videos are on Solana. And if I wanted to get millions of subscribers i'd be talking about solana and i would be finding justification for why it will flip ethereum i'd be recording videos on that because i'd get so many views i'd get all kinds of new subscribers and those subscribers would get wrecked why because nothing runs for forever it just runs in cycles and then the narrative flips to something else in fact solana is starting to have some problems because it's getting so much network traction Realized the last time Solana ran, it ran really, 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 really hard. And then it shut down and failed, combined by Sam Bankman Freed, who was a big backer behind Solana. Well, that went bust too. And Solana absolutely got devastated from there. And yet there were so many people buying Solana at the top because it's the new thing and it's the best thing and it's the fastest ever. Look, Solana is not the fastest ever. There's lots to like about Solana, but nothing runs for forever. And so it's a great time to be looking at diversifying out of Solana into things that haven't run. It's a great time to look at diversifying out of AI into things, narratives that haven't run because nothing runs for forever. Or learn that lesson. Say, Rain, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And, and watch, maybe it'll double from here and then it will collapse. Cool. But what happens is nothing runs for forever and then it collapses and the narrative focuses on something else. Could change. Historically, that's just what's happened over and over and over again. Maybe history doesn't repeat itself this time, but I just have to go off of what are the probabilities. And the probabilities of you making 30x from here on Solana, the probability is like 2%. The probability of Solana reversing on you from here is like 65%. So what kind of probabilities? Now, that doesn't mean Solana can't double from here, can't triple from here. It could. The probabilities of that are 20 or 30%. Cool. I just like playing the odds. I like investing in things that haven't run yet, that have a very strong narrative. Omi is a perfect, in fact, the perfect example of that. And then wait till that narrative hits. And then everyone will think you're a genius. You're not a genius. You're just learning how to recognize probabilities and play those probabilities. It's almost like you can actually go to the casino if you count cards and they don't catch you. And you can actually beat the casino, even though the odds are stacked against you. Well, what you're learning when you're learning to become a savage crypto investor is you're learning how to take probabilities that are stacked for you rather than doing what everyone else that comes into the space does and take probabilities that are stacked against them. 
And Jordan, I, I would, I wish you were right that everyone could come in and do well and do pretty well. A lot of the people who are coming in right now are not going to do well because they're not going to take profits on the things that are up and they're going to get wrecked on those. And then they're going to sell them at a loss to chase into something else that's been running because there's some confirmation bias that, oh, it's been running for forever. You know, keep running. And they're going to chase from green candles, then eventually candle sell when they're red and roll into other things that are have green candles, thinking they'll continue to go up. And they'll actually do quite poorly. And many people, even though their timing is really good coming in right now, they'll literally lose money in this market. And it's just because they're new and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're doing what their emotions are telling them to do, and their emotions are going to lead them all wrong. I'll Thank give you, you a little bit of pushback on Solana just purely for the fact that the fees are so low. That's compared to Ethereum right now. Ethereum fees are getting high again, guys. They're like $100 to do single transaction. So the reason I think Solana is running so much is because people could put in $50 or $100 into a meme coin or even a pr proper project. Like OTK is a really cool gaming project on Solana. So if you if you put $100 into that, that's $100 in there. The fee is like one cent to do a transaction and it's instant and it works really well. But if you do that in Ethereum, you, you put $100 in, you're going to have $1 of the token and $99 of gas fees. So that's, yeah, that's but, I think, what's driving it at the moment. But, but why not Polygon? Why not Immutable X? Why not any of these? So Solana is not different from all these other layers that way. It's just green candles create bigger green candles until they crash. And that's what's happened is like, oh my gosh, I threw $100 into this Solana mean coin and it's now worth $500. And they think it's going to continue and they're going to learn the hard way that it doesn't, that it reverses. Because right now Solana has a decent value proposition. It's not the only chain with a decent value proposition, but it's one that's been running. So then you have all these people with this confirmation bias that they assume what's been happening recently is going to be what continues to happen. And they're going to find out that's absolutely not the case. When you chase into what's already high, hoping it goes higher, as some person reverses, at some point it reverses massively on you. Then those people then sell at a loss. They roll it into something else that's been running, assuming that will run. And usually it does for a little bit and then it reverses on them and they lose money because they're just playing it all wrong. Yeah, I, I, agree, over, I agree that's quite possible. Quite, it's quite possible that Solana will reverse like that at some point. But the, the reason I think it's useful is just because uh, it's so simple Compared to, I've tried a lot of different chains. Solana is so easy to use; it's so instant, um, and transactions are so cheap. Again, yeah. it's not it's not the same as Ethereum. Ethereum is better in terms of decentralization, right? I, I think Cardano has a really good shot of running. Cardano is seventy nine percent down from its all time high. Uh, I think Solana is only twenty percent off its all time high. So I actually yeah. have a lot more Cardano than I have Solana. I actually I sold most of my Solana already. Um, so I'm not really pushing it. I just that it's so easy to use. I can see that it keeps going up because of this low fee thing and simplicity. But I have a friend who's who was trying to get into Solana uh, meme coins. He lost on almost every one of them uh, yesterday, and he's now given up on that. And he he lost a bunch of money because they all just rug pulled. Like he's like, oh, this yeah. project looks great. He got in and it looked good. It went up and then just rugged. Oh. And it happened to him like five times in a row. He's like, okay, I think I'm done with this. Investing so in. Definitely, well, caution, caution people, be careful. You, you be careful might as well be at the craps table and take half the odds that the casino gives you. Yeah. Um, normal, because investing in the new meme coins, like I know there's stories about so-and-so investing $500. Your chance of winning the lottery are better. If you're going to buy meme coins, Pepe, Doge, and Shiba are the ones that if you think meme coins are going to pump, those are the ones to be in because they're not likely to rug pull on you. Because the amount of rug pulls on these new coins that they launch is through the roof. You don't know how to research them. The ones that absolutely take off are absolutely orchestrated by whales. Like there's one that recently launched and it went to an $800 million market cap. And it got listed on all these exchanges. Is that like bone? They, yeah. yeah, got listed on all these major exchanges. They would have had to have that set up with all those exchanges already. And so it was absolutely an orchestrated deal for it to pump and you don't have the connections to know about those happening i don't even have the connections to know about i possibly have the connections to know about those happening i don't listen in on those channels because i refuse to be part of anything like that because there is tons of money to be made the right way which is just investing in good projects i don't like pump and dumps 
I don't like any of that stuff, playing around with any of that stuff. I see a lot of that in the back channels that I have access to, and I just will have zero part to do with it because number one, I'm not going to wreck my audience. Number two, like there's a legitimate way to make amazing money here. And why not just focus on that? You don't have to lose sleep at night. You don't have to worry about whether you're screwing people. You're just taking chances on projects that will succeed for the right reasons. Cool. That's where I want to be. On the Solana thing, or I guess on the Ethereum thing first, um, I, I know the gas fees do can get high depending on the time of day. I just went to go have a, a to see how much they were. If I were to swap just $100 of ETH for OMI and the transaction fees are like, are less than $16, 1351 to 1519. Um, so, so they are not a hundred dollars per transaction yet. I imagine at some time they, they, they were two days ago. So it just depends on the time of day. And, and didn't they just have a, a, a thing though? Like, um, that, that, that didn't affect any, any Ethereum um, on chain was not affected. Oh, the update anymore. wasn't okay. It was gotcha. all layer twos. I don't know why they did that, but all layer twos got like infinitely cheaper from like, I don't know, it was a few dollars to like a few cents. But for some reason, yeah. Ethereum fees stayed exactly the same. So I don't, I don't but, know why. But they yeah, did I mean, you have Solana that's that's done super well. It's gone up 10x over the last five months, and, and that's great. And like you said, it, is it going to be higher than this? A year from now, I'm 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 like 99.99 percent sure it will be, but again, I feel like the better. I mean, to flip Ethereum, like everything's built on Ethereum. Cardano, Cardano, Cardano is going to do the best. It's so <laughs> far down still. It's like a, it's 75 cents or something like that, and its all-time high was uh, three dollars or over three dollars. So that's already four and a half x just its all-time high, and I think it's going to do a four times its all-time high. So that's 16 x from here. Not financial <laughs> advice. I, I have a lot of my uh, my eggs in um, Bitcoin <laughs> and uh, Cardano. Omi. So it is you're like when you're thinking of investing in crypto, realize it's about probability. So when Solana is close to its all time high from before, like what are the probabilities it's going to do another 30 X? Now at seven dollars, when Solana hit seven dollars ever so briefly. Well, the chances that it could go up from there were really, really high. But also there was a chance that it would continue to go down. And most people didn't buy at that point. They sold. It's funny, all those same people who did not buy at $7 are the ones FOMOing in at current prices on Solana, not realizing the odds are now for great gains from here are stacked massively against them. Like you said, Randy, I agree Solana a year from now will probably be higher than it is today. So can you make gains on it? Probably. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the opportunity cost, because what if you had put that money in something else? that went 30x and Solana only triple from here. Well, so you made money, but did you make the best choice you could have with this window of time that's not going to last for forever? And so if you're always taking the 3x instead of the 30x, you'll have made some money. You'll have also squandered the best opportunity you have ever had in your life, better than investing in Google's IPO or Amazon's IPO. You'll have squandered something that literally could have taken you from $10,000 to two million or a million dollars over a four-year period, and then the next four-year period put you into the tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, Randy, I'm ready for think, uh, with Ethereum fees, I think they've now made it. I don't know when it is. They weighted it, so the larger the transaction, the more you pay for gas fees. So that they, I, I believe they put weight on it. it. They didn't used to have that for last crypto run. So now, if you do a, a cheaper transaction, you don't pay as high fees, even when the network's more busy. So I think it sort of makes people doing larger transactions on Ethereum pay a larger fee, sort of helping pay more for the network. Even though technically the transaction's the exact same amount. If you if you do one dollar or you do a billion dollars, it's the same smart contract that has to go through, right? But they can weight it so that the people who have larger transactions pay more for the fees. So if you're just doing a small transaction, that's probably why I had a really small fee there. Just an FYI for anyone. Listening. By the way, we almost got 500 people watching, which is insane. So obviously, crypto is heating up because we normally get about 200 or so. We've got almost 500. Um, I would like to wrap it up soon, though. Uh, so if we could all go around and sort of say our parting parting words. Um, Laurie, do you want to go first? We haven't heard from you for a little while. You're muted. Yeah, you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> Three times. Patrick. You know what? I'm coughing today and I don't want to I don't want to interrupt you guys when I'm sitting here coughing. Uh, so we do have a stormtrooper drop 
which we didn't really talk about that. Um, I think that's, or we did, and I was off stream, was was I? Um, so I think that's that's pretty exciting. Uh, nice price. Uh, Randy, do you recall the edition size? Yeah, it, it, in total between the common and the secret rare, there's like 15,300 ish that's not enough that's not enough is it people want to i wish they had done more it would make it easier to build stormtrooper armies yeah yeah and at, at 10 bucks a pop i think that's um i think that's pretty reasonable price mm -hmm. so uh, i think, I think they're gonna be worth a lot of money i think some whales are gonna come and want to buy thousands of them <laughs> could be a good really yeah. good drop I, I I think they're going to do very well. And even people, I think, will just, you know, like spinning the, you know, hitting the button to see if they can get different mints, et cetera. So uh, watch out for that drop. I think that's going to be uh, a successful drop coming up. And this has been something we've been talking about in the community for like a couple of years now. And it, it's finally here, you know, so, so much happens. But um, so looking forward to that drop. And um, other than that, that that's pretty much the main thing. Waiting for my comics, hoping VV gives yep. us, a, hoping VV gives us an update on what's going on, how many are left, how many have been redeemed. Um, I would like to see that you know come out come out soon, so we know where we are with that. And um, a speculative kind of coins, um, you know, my husband keeps trying to convince me to invest in Vulcan Dwarf. So that is my outrageous, outlandish um, pick today. If you guys actually look at what that is, don't have your children around. So uh, <laughs> okay. and cool. I'm only joking. No Vulcan door. He's only serious. But no, I'm really not. <laughs> but I guess in this day and age, anything goes. So that was one of the crazier ones that I saw Uh that we saw come out the past couple of weeks was, was Vulcan dwarf. So do your research and, and, and be careful, even if it sounds fun and catchy. Awesome. Randy, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that people have to really take a look at how much VV has made in the past, how much they've, they've, you know, in the bull market and there, that's fine. You know, a couple hundred over the last few years, but pay attention to really what they've, made over the last couple of months i mean you just had a sports vertical a music vertical a new exchange and this marvel thing happened all within a week of each other this is that one that's insane uh to the amount of money like they're gonna make they're gonna gross one hundred fifty three thousand just on the stormtrooper drop on sunday um not including other drops that they have and, and this marvel thing yeah it's a nice little push we're getting a lot more new users so all of these things that were uh, that, that we're seeing, they're not just one-time customers. It's not like we have a furniture store and maybe we see them once every couple months when they get a new futon or a couch. Like, no, they're they're coming back all the time. And even if they don't buy from the store, they'll buy in the secondary and they'll get a piece of that. All of the amount of money that they're going to do. Uh, also, I'm I'm going about to, I'm about to buy a comic here uh, live. I'm going to get a, a Gwen <laughs> Stacy nice. number two. When pay now, I'll let you guys know what what it gets. Spider Gwen Smash number two. We totally smashed. Yes, her and Dazzler. Um, and it also, if anyone's going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, on that Thursday night, we're going to be going to see Deadpool 3 on that Thursday. Uh, that will be Contact DV Fan Bam. She'll get you on the list. Um, please don't message me. I won't see it. Uh, and the comic that I'm getting... Oh, hang on. Let me make the... Okay, well, it's saying processing. It usually, it usually shows up right away. Not to flex, flex on Laura that's been waiting for like. Randy, I can hours. see your credit card numbers. Just kidding. Wow. Oh my! <laughs> you go, George. Just get the credit card numbers. Sorry, had to do it. Okay, I got a, I got a common number four oh seven. Nice, nice, awesome. Rain, Rain, do you want to uh, give your parting thoughts? What's exciting to me is like I missed the IPO for Google opportunity. I actually had four thousand dollars. I was going to invest in Google's IPO, and then I listened to Warren Buffett, who said like oh no, it's overpriced and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, well, Warren Buffett's one of the most successful investors of all time. He must know better than I do. And so I didn't put that $4,000 in and it would have made me probably a million dollars. Cool. Well, I missed that opportunity and I, I missed a few other opportunities because it wasn't in the right position at the right time because sometimes a lot of opportunities take you hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to be able to put yourself in position for. 
What I love about what's going on with crypto, and Omi is one of my favorite projects, and Vivi, sometimes the collectibles, a lot of what I'm buying now is Omi versus the collectibles, is the chance that you can invest like where you're at, whether it's $1,000, $10,000. And I'm not telling you to invest. I just like that the opportunity is there, that you can buy it. And, you know, you can listen to my channel for the, the case I make about the four-year cycle and buying during the bear market and then selling during the bull market. It's as predictable as anything that's ever happened in crypto. Like I was saying that normal VC investing success rates are about 10%. And that means over about a 10 year period, they end up making about seven X on their money because the ones that survive end up going about 70 X. So that means they make about a seven X on their money over 10 years in crypto. When you're doing it right, even with a 35% success rate, which means a 65% failure rate over a three year period from 20, um, technically 2018 through 2021, you know, I made a 20 X from what I'd put in. Had I timed it a little bit better, it could have been a hundred X from where things went at the bottom. But like that kind of return is amazing. There hasn't been a period in history that you can make those kind of returns in such a short span of time. So that's what has me excited about it. The reason I spend so much time on OMI and coming on here is because I do think one of the best opportunities, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is what's going on with the Comey. Now, I followed them since I invested in the pre-sale. I was probably the only person that covers the Comey that invested in their pre-sale. And then I did my first video on it on like 3rd or 4th of March, 2021. It was probably the first dedicated video on Vivi's app. I didn't even know how to pronounce it right. Like I call it Viv because like I tried to search for other videos to tell me what this app was. So I followed this for a long time and what the founders are doing is exactly right. And like, I think it's gonna lead as people move over to digital collectibles, which I think they will, Vivi and Ekomi continue to position themselves like at the forefront in the lead of that. And what probably comes because of that is some massive gains. And so that's why I spend so much time talking about this project. I know there's lots of new people in crypto that got in three years ago and they bought high and they're freaking out because it's not as high as what they paid for it. And they're fudding on it every single day. And they like to argue with me and I'll say affectionately, you're new. Don't waste your time arguing with me because you're not going to win because a year from now, we're going to know exactly how this plays out. And those people are going to end up wrong. Why am I hundred percent short? No, just like 97% short. So 3% chance they win this argument. I'll take these odds every every day of the week. 97% chance that Ecomi does massive numbers over this next year. Can't awesome. wait. Thanks, I can't believe Ray. you said that it's possible to get, uh, that happens that this year, you know, that narrative hits, you said, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're still early in this, right? We haven't even had the Bitcoin having already. The public is starting to wake up for for Bitcoin. This is happening so early, and what happens is, is Bitcoin hits numbers. People in their mind are like, "That never should happen." So let me look deeper at what's going on with this. As they look deeper, they then throw money into Bitcoin and meme coins, but then they keep researching and they find people's videos about things like this VV app that has Batman and Marvel comics and everything. And then they start, they find out the OMI token is associated with that. And then they go crazy. So we still have like nine months in this year. Like we're barely started this year. And think of what's happened to Bitcoin's price and other things. So I, I think 2024 is going to be a, an amazing year. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate all your time coming on. Thanks, Crypto Rain. Thanks, Queen Vivi. And thanks to the real Randy Chavez. Thank you for all the people watching today. We, we hit just under 500 live viewers right this second. So that's awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you next Bye. time.